One. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Genius Days. Today we're talking about cosmic sexuality, how to use the healing power of sexuality to change and transform our lives. Starting off, obviously, we have to give a disclaimer. So this is not for kids 18 plus and older. And yeah, anybody else want to take the disclaimers? Right. So we're educators, entertainers. Take everything we see as a grain of salt. And should you take the advice or suggestions, take it at your own risk. And choose something fun happen. Feel free to let us know. There we all. Awesome. So, man, this is a big topic. I feel like we could stretch this one out no no there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any puns here or maybe way too many puns but we're gonna move through it and essentially you know when i think about the build-up to a sexual encounter i think that's equally as important as the actual encounter itself right so there is that sense of like i don't know if you guys have experienced this but like there's like you have this like one big light on and it's like the, the first times when you're trying to like hook up with a girl or like, you know, have sex. And it's just like, there's no dim lighting, you know, it's just like two sweaty people. And you're like, do you want something to drink? And they're, they're like these, you know, rough patches or like these phases where you move through until you get to an understanding of that I'm present here with another human being. They have their own storyline. And we lost Sumit. Sumit will be back after these following commotion messages. Hi, do you have erectile dysfunction? Well, we have the perfect <laughs> event for you. Welcome to the Cosmic Code of Sexuality. And we need to get Sumit some Wi-Fi strengtheners. But anyway, Alejandro, this is not my speciality. So I'd like you to talk for a second. Yeah, yeah so... The more, this is some cosmic sexuality is something that you have to practice with somebody. Right. You can't, you can't practice it by yourself. It's not one of those things that like you can do. It's like, it's not self-help actually. Um, and you have to build trust with this person continuously right. until you continue to learn each other's bodies, learn each other, positioning how you guys fit into each other. Right, because mm -hmm. when you're having sex, you're you're a puzzle piece, right? Yeah. But you see, there, there's obviously there's good there's good sex and there's bad sex, and so you know, bad sex is like it's not exciting, right? <laughs> good sex is really exciting, right? And it all just depends on how you mold yourself with this person, right? And Maybe mold is not the right word, but how do you see yourself fitting with this person? And um, yeah, it's something that that you have to you have you're gonna have to have sex multiple multiple times until you get to that level where it's you're comfortable. You're like you're the the more sex you have with this specific person, the better it's gonna get. I see. Right? It's kind of like sparring with a opponent continuously over the same opponent continuously. At some point, you reach a certain flow state. Like you know exactly what the, what the rhythm should be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my question exactly. is, is it is then cosmic sex similar to like Tantra? Um, Again, I'm very unfamiliar um, with this territory. You can experience cosmic sexuality while performing tantra yeah right but tantra like exists on its own cosmic sexuality exists on its own individual right. but they can definitely both bleed into each other um i see so they're completely different but would uh, would i get the same results um okay let, let me reframe the question what is cosmic sexuality really Cosmic sexuality is when you connect to the divine through sex, right? Right. And, and 
um, you know, you will literally feel like, like, ah, like you will feel like a, a real opening inside of yourself, right? And, and you're like, Ooh, you fucking, you want to ascend and shit. You're like, I'm ready, God. Okay, I, I fucking seen the universe and shit, you know. <laughs> and and what I realized is like um, that point after the like like uh, right now the way that I'm, I'm I used to have sex like like I was masturbating with this girl's pussy, right? Right. right that's right. how that's how I used to do it when I was younger and shit, right? Because it was just exciting for the most part just to be in there right but uh i had to evolve it from that point and now it's more like it's not it's also not even about having an orgasm right because there are going to be times where i have sex and i don't have an orgasm right it's it's just for we have sex for the sake of of feeling each other right and when you have that mentality of like we're just here to share love with each other and share passion and for me to feel pleasure, that's that that's like the main one. It's like for me to feel pleasure, right? right? Because through pleasure, that's where you're gonna heal. You're gonna heal when you get the pleasure, right? You're gonna heal when when you have that amazing orgasm. You're gonna heal when you start moaning. You're gonna heal when you have a, a deep belly laugh. You're gonna go to a massage, that's pleasure. You're gonna heal, right? So Sex is a way of getting pleasure to heal ourselves, right? But when we don't, when we're doing pleasure for the sake of, um, um, I, I don't know, frustration. I think it's like out of frustration, out of desperation, um, when we're trying to, when we feel empty, there's like an emptiness that we're trying to fill in a way it's not even, it's like, it's not even that. It's not even trying to empty, fill up, fill myself up with anything it's like i'm already full i think i think i'm already full but i want to please i want to feel sens sensual it's like it's like to the touch to the touch right and it's through the touch that we begin to activate we get to activate the energy right that's why like you you don't you do foreplay first because it's the touch that begins to activate and when you don't do foreplay right she doesn't end up turned on Right, because it means that your touches are not holding a specific magic through your intention of your mind. Yeah, how you guys like that? It's interesting. It makes sense. It makes sense. But it's true, the foreplay from a sex logistical perspective, you get the oven warmed up. It gets the engine going. It gets everyone primed. It's like the warm up round. Uh huh. <laughs> well, it it, uh, it it can be um. It can foreplay can be a thing in its own self. Of course, right? it's just like it's just an aspect an aspect of like sexuality that you share, right? And then sex is just like the ultimate intimate way of saying I love you at least in in like uh, like when you have sex in its purest form it's the it's the most pure way of saying I love you right yeah I yeah. think so yeah that makes sense I can see anyway, why you say that I anyway, yeah. assume you were cut off so I'll yeah um basically just coming off of your points, because I totally forgot <laughs> what I was starting with. I was basically making the point that, you know, mindfulness before sex, so it clears the palate, you know, in a sense where you're not like rushing into it or you're, I don't know, like trying to fast forward through it, but enjoying the whole movie. Um, But I like what you said around, you know, the idea of not sex for frustration or validation, but for to have fun, right? To have fun, but in a connected, loving way. Like, even a girl who's completely like, you know, she wants to get railed, there is still that passionate, present, and loving energy that she wants to receive in that, right? So I think that a lot of people talk about foreplay. I think it's important to also establish the importance of intraplay, 
which is like, you know, you take a break, you like drink some water, <laughs> like you use the restroom, you come back, right? I, I think that there's something powerful in the, in the break that you can come back even stronger or you can keep the energy flowing again. I think not a lot of people talk about that phase of like, okay, I'm, I'm having sex, I have a break, now I'm going back into it. Uh, what are your guys' opinion of that? that short gap of time. So and you mean basically after you came and the, the quote unquote fun is over or what, what do you mean specifically? So it could be either thing, right? You could be transitioning from oral to sex and then from sex to another position or, or whatever, right? Uh, so would the, the transitional phase is between either one position to the next or from sex to rest. Right. To build up. Yeah. Transitional phases, yeah. And what was the question again? Well, I just wanted to know like um, your opinion on the importance of that, like what you guys do in that time and how you how you change the rhythm. Because I think the escalation, you know, a, a lot of the times when we see it in media or the way people describe it is like a ladder. It's like, oh, you're just climbing this ladder. It's like, oh, touch your hand and then go here and then touch her there. <laughs> and it, Wait, I, I, I see it more like playing Guitar Hero. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to find the rhythm, you're, you're the momentum and the crescendo. But yeah, I just want to know your, your guys' opinion of that. My opinion would be it, it feels a lot like tag. Tag, you're it. That's, that's how it feels, but less in a kindergarten and more in the jungle, let's say more primal. Where you see positions and the butt slaps and you know the, the hee hees and the ha ha's and giggling and just having fun with someone I care about. It's that playful love, let's say, if that makes sense. It's showing you, you care, but very playfully. You're teasing each other smacking each other in the face, on the ass, on the thighs, whatever, and having a, to use the old words, a gay old time. Yeah, but I would do. And I find it very interesting that you said that because it feels very much like a fun wrestling match. Of course, I'm always going to use martial arts terminology, but it does feel like that. Hash, <laughs> pause, no homo, whatever. But <laughs> it's it's along the same lines. But in this case, it's way more intimate. And I never realized I did it till you said it. It's almost like an unspoken thing that, of course, you're supposed to caress her after you absolutely derailed her from whatever patch she was on or it completely gutted her like a fish. Of course, even chefs do it. After you absolutely gutted her, then you massage the fish, you oil the fish, you put the fish in the pan, you grill the fucking fish then, and then you eat the fish again. But enough about me. What about you, Alejandro? Like very strange analogies one after another. <laughs> <laughs> it was like wrestling and then a fish. <laughs> But yeah, no, I get, I get what you're saying. And I think it's mainly about keeping that vibe going, right? Is what I was talking about in terms of the interplay because I make sure that if I'm, let's say I'm going to a club or something, I want to bring the club to my home in a sense where my lights are strobe lights or there's a projector, there's Spotify music playing. It doesn't feel that much of a jump to a new location. And I think that is another way of just establishing comfort, right? It's like, you're not so much thinking about it, like thinking about, oh, what was that wiki how post on how to give her a clitoral orgasm, like turn 13 degrees to the left and then do the, you know, we're not doing that. We're just simply like, we're setting the intention and you know, you're, you know, at least maybe the erogenous zones, that's good to know, right? Like the forearm, uh, the neck, uh, you know, these areas of, what do you call it? The vaginal margin. 
<laughs> and, uh, right, the ties, the calves, some, yeah, the some nipple. would like to feed, I don't know. The most sensitive areas, you could say, of the body. Right. right? The most areas of the body. And, and knowing which areas require pressure. And uh, it's so confusing because, like, the thing is, sex is everywhere, but it's so taboo at the same time. And so people, the general public, not us, obviously, because we're tapped into a different process, but hashtag. the general, yeah, <laughs> hashtag. Um, but the general public, you know, it's like they have this split mind in terms of this sex thing, right? So, and of course there's so many negative attributes to it, but I think it is an amazing, beautiful thing if it can be established in that way. But yeah, I think, uh, the senses, what you said, Ivan, is very important, like essential oils, candles, man, girls, they swoon over that, you know, why are they buying like bath bombs, bubble bath, all this kind of stuff, right? In Unless it might be a special surprise in the bath bomb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, instead of you trying to figure out what is her way to do it, you just take her hand you know, put it over her vagina and just say, show me how you do it, right? And then she's giving you the roadmap. You don't have to try and work like, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out like, oh, what is the best way for me to please, you know, please her and shit like this, you know? Because she's, oftentimes guys are scared to just ask women for their own roadmap because every woman is different, Yeah. right? Their traumas, they have their issues, you know, and things like this. So it's just important to establish once you, that's why I said mindfulness before sex, right? Because then you have this blank slate and then after orgasm, you go back into the blank slate, which is no mind. So you start with no mind and you, uh, you release and then you have no mind. And of course, you don't always have to release as I, Ivan said, right? It's like, you can sometimes just enjoy it. Like sex usually lasts for three to seven minutes according to like studies and shit. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, I don't know. I. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like if you look it up, right, sex usually lasts for general public three to seven or around minutes, right? One, so it's a general public and two, they might have problems. Yeah, for real. But we're also so conditioned to watching porn that it like lasts for like two hours or whatever that we think that it's supposed to be this <laughs> better than <it> is. <laughs> for sure. I just see, man. But you know, that's the thing. It's like, if you last really like, let's say seven pumps, right? And you're like, oh man. And you hear the, whoop, like the Mario music in the in your head, like wah, 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 you know? And it's like that, she's reacting to that, right? She's reacting to your response of how you are in bed. So if you bust and you're like, damn, you're so hot. You know, that's never happened with me before. She's actually, that's she's taking that as a compliment, right? Whereas if you bust and it's like, oh man, I messed up or whatever, you know, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. beta behavior rather than like, she's judging your response to it rather than the actual thing. Yeah. Ryan but Curtis, yeah. if you're done, uh, assume you Ryan Curtis, do you have a question or a statement or a confession? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, share some insight, kind of what I'm thinking as we're speaking here. Um, so like first thing like I'm doing is I'm differentiating you know the difference between what makes cosmic sex for a male and a female because it's two different things like in my opinion because for us you know we can get some really good you know pussy but it ain't the same thing for her if it's just more of a physical attraction like you know it's a one night stand or something you know it could be but I guess in, in my mind what I'm saying is you know because it's all part of nature you know to give them the cosmic experience and to give us the cosmic experience that we're looking for since we are built to lead we get to lead that sexual encounter for them to have that cosmic experience is to be led through that if if that makes sense you know they like to be taken control of and manhandled and stuff so i think you know every woman is different too so you know it comes with that chemistry and getting you know to know the person and stuff so i think like the cosmic sexuality comes down to like i think ivan was saying your intentions with what you're doing you know your words and stuff like that because that gives you the energy and your touch um but i'm just kind of thinking about it like differentiating the two what makes 
what makes it cosmic for both parties? Because you could have your mind blown just from getting some good ass. But when you have that connection for, for both people, you know, mutually satisfied on the same level, I think it's because as a male, you've got to lead through the experience and kind of get what you want out of it. And as a female, you get to kind of let go and, you know, dive into your nature. But these are just thoughts I'm having. So I just wanted to share that kind of think about what makes it different for a male and woman to reach that level. Yeah, bro. You're right. No, I think you're, I think you're spot on with it because um, what it, what it is from the, from the male aspect, it is like you, you go on into your animal, like you really go into animal world. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't even like act like a human. Sometimes I act more like it, like a, like a legit animal I make animal sounds like growl like all this shit is real like and it's like um to just dominate her right what uh and for her it's like it's like that total submission she could submit you know she wants to be told hey flip over oh and yeah now we're gonna we're gonna do it like this way right but you know bite her fucking ear you know what i mean uh, uh spitting fuck you know get nasty get nasty you know uh like don't like when you when you eat when you eat the pussy it's not like uh, you can start like that just to tease right but don't do that the whole way okay it's the that's the equivalent of like when girls don't know how to suck dick and they're like <laughs> And they, they grab it like this, bro. They grab it with like three fucking fingers. And they're like. <laughs> Bitch, I see the way you eat that goddamn motherfucking ice cream. Now eat this goddamn fucking dick like it's melting. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I'm saying? These bitches don't know how to fucking suck dick. And so that, that's the equivalent. It's like, so when you, when you grab her, you get, you really got to get in there. You, you, you get in there, right? You fucking, oh, you just fucking love that shit, right? You, you fully embrace her body. You just, it's just like, it's just like, um, um, this is not the best analogy, but I was going to say like, like a kid who's never had candy and he finally walks into a candy store and his parents are like, you can have all the candy you want, right? Oh. Similar to that, it was just, it's like in the, in, during the day, I wasn't having sex, been thinking about having sex, right? Now I get to have sex and I'm gonna have all the fucking candy that I want, right? Sugar crash, except you don't have a crash afterwards, right? You just, you just go, oh, and then you're like, I okay, want if you're ready to go, <laughs> you go again. I wanna add on to that a little bit too, to uh, add on to what, uh, scripts was saying earlier too about like the interplay and stuff that's where your character comes in individually you know and then also knowing your partner because you know sometimes you know they might enjoy the laugh in between sometimes it's strictly business you know until it's done you got to put them to sleep you know it's all that but you knowing them and yourself you know the the higher consciousness you know because sex is part of life so just you know connect it to life when we're in that flow state say you know interacting in business you're just hitting you know all your quotas, you know, this, that, and the third, because you're, you're controlling things because you know the variables you can work with. So it's like, when you understand your woman and what you're working with, you know, us hitting that cosmic state is because we're, you know, we're controlling the situation. So it's different, but it's still the same because we're still like Ivan is saying as well, tapping into our nature. That shit don't change. It's just how you express it. For real, bro, you're not going to be like, Oh, okay, baby, turn around, turn around. No, you're gonna fucking grab her. And you're gonna fucking flip her over. You know, you don't, you don't fuck it. You're not gonna be like, oh, oh, baby, um, I kind of want to hit from the back now. Like, no, 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 no. That's such a fucking turn off. That's just so fucking weird, right? Uh, like, don't you don't really you don't really ask. Right, but you're also not like weird about it because like you're not comfortable with like, not 
I don't know what's comfortable with anal. It's something that you have to ask, right? But don't, like, when you're having sex, it's not, not the time to be shy. Not the time to be scared. Not the time, not the time for any, it's the time for, like, pure expression of, of freedom. It's just, it's the total freedom. Even the, the, the taking off the clothes is you're taking off the layers of social conditioning with the clothes and, and, and it was like, no, we're not wearing this condition no more. Now we're free, right? And for me, I'm not just like, oh, I, lo I love her, her tits, her ass, her face. No, I'm like, I, love, I, I want her legs. I want her hips. I, I want her skin. I want her arms. I want her neck. I want her ears. It's like the full physical embrace of, of, of the whole human body and, and the, the beauty of the whole human body. It's like... Like I love the toes, I love the feet, I love, I love I love the knees, I love I love the elbows, the hands. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not saying I, I have a foot fetish, and I'm like, yo, let me fuck, jerk jerk me off, baby, with them feet. You know, it's not even like that. It's like it's the whole human body. I love it all. You know what I mean? So in that moment, I just I just embrace it and I just bring it in and I squeeze it. And I I just take my time with all of it. I take my time with all of it because I'm like, okay, okay, okay. We gonna have this four course meal, right? You know, everyone knows that if you rush into your food and you eat too fast, you get full very fast, right? AKA you bust real fucking quick, right? And so this same way, you you gotta take it slow. You gotta take it slow, and then you got you, you're done with your appetizer. You give a little break, right? You slow it down. Then you got your new meal. They got they, they got they got the, another course. The second course comes in. Uh, you come back, you got ready, you keep going, you keep going, you get, you finish, you can take a break, it takes a little bit, chill, chill for a second, and then just go back in there again, like, like, that's, like, that's just, that's it, you know, unless the person's too tired to continue to go, then you don't have to go anymore, right, but, like, the whole point is, like, to, it, it's, like, um, it, Cosmic sexuality at one point escapes the point of like, of like uh, the purpose of, of like mating where it's like about having kids, right? To have offspring. Like it's like, it surpasses that experience. And it's like, a, it's, a, it's a different consciousness of it. It's more like, uh, I want to experience just like, just like pure joy and pure bliss, right? And that is what like, authentic masculine and feminine energy are right and and in the same way that you interact with the feminine energy the same way that you will have sex right if you're a very shy guy you will not going to be a good at sex you will not you're not going to be that that great you might be decent you might be you watched a few porn videos you saw johnny sins and you're like okay i'm gonna copy this move and shit right but you're gonna try to copy what he does and you're gonna bust really quick right and so um, consciousness, consciousness, leaving, leaving, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Oh, pleasure. Okay, it'll it'll come back to me. I can pass this on to. All right. So, I really like what you said about if you're shy, you're not going to perform well, and I agree. Absolutely. I can't hear anything that's coming out of you. I don't know if it's just me. Can you guys hear? Double checking. Yeah. I would recommend you double check your settings. What is it going on again? Right. What if this is slightly inspired by TPM, theatrical plasticity method, where Sumit, being the author of this method and book, said everything is theater. So literally in the full play, we find the answer to almost a warm obsession in acting. Now I'm not saying we Hamlet and act Shakespearean, but I would say if it helps do it. It is literally in your power to use full play to summon the beast or a more sexual version or whatever animal you want to play. Tiger, bear, eagle, you name it. And in that, 
we start to see how acting and dance come into play because dance is full play, literally full play. You get connected, you get winded up, let's say. Tension is being built. And even after the clothes are being removed, you have the choice to either completely devour your partner then and there, or like Alejandro said, take your time like it's a full course meal. And for appetizers, your main course and your dessert. And you enjoy each and every one of these courses as if it was meant to be. And that you are at the same time, the actor, the director, the dance choreographer, and the actual audience of your own experience. And how trippy is that? That you could do that. I'll end it on that. Man, uh, I like the fact that you brought up TPM. Thanks oh, of course the, you do. For the plug, for the shout out. <laughs> and I've definitely been thinking about this idea of theater and the different areas of life, right? How you show up in your life is how you will show up in the bedroom, in the boardroom, in any room for that matter. So the idea of warm ups and how you sort of related it to you know, foreplay. I think that's very interesting because if you've ever seen theater <laughs> rehearsal warm-ups, they're ridiculous, man. They're like zip zap zap riding on my little white pony. They're, they're like, they're silly, man. They're goofy. You know, it's like, it makes no sense. Someone's going, hey, 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 hey. It's like, it's just ridiculous. And I think the fact that it's ridiculous, it causes a bit of an ego death, right? Because you're like, I'm not myself anymore. I'm just whatever this exercise is. And I think similarly in, in sex, you kind of, you let go. It's like you leave your ego at the door almost a little bit. And you're like, I'm channeling something extra. Like I'm channeling the cosmos in this case, cosmic sexuality, right? Like I'm leaving my ego out there. Like, okay, cosmos come in, take over me right now. <laughs> and I think that that's so powerful to think of it in that context but also to think of it in terms of masculine, feminine, you know, polarity. And I think a lot of guys, what they're missing, it's not the shyness, I think, because shyness could be like a tendency for some people. It's like, yeah, sometimes they close up or they go more inwards. But I think it's almost like, how are they using their subtext, right? What are they subcommunicating through their moans or through what they're doing in their actions, right? If you kind of, you know, have the kind of like grab her hand like this with just a bunch like a few fingers it's going to be like you know it's going to be awkward right and that's sub communicating something that you're not confident in yourself that you don't go after what you want right that you're unsure of the situation and so i think that you could be talking to her about your favorite movie but underneath that there could be a subtext of I really like you. I want to see you naked. Right. And she's got to feel that. And so if you, you know, lead her, take her hand and let's go for a walk. It's not necessarily that you want to go for a walk. Obviously you're, you're going for the walk to lead up to something. Right. But let's go for the walk signifies that you're actually taking the lead. Right. And so you're almost like this broadcasting system, right? It's like, what are you broadcasting in that moment? Easiest way to kind of see is like, are you broadcasting fear or love? I think that's kind of a simplified version of it. But are you tuning your radio frequency to love FM or fear FM? Right. And when you're tapped into the cosmic FM, yo, like <laughs> you're just unstoppable, man. You, you like you completely let go and you allow it. It's almost like how Bruce Lee says, it's that mechanical side, the scientific side, because sex is a science and art, right? 
I know the Hindus tried to make sex into a science, like some kind of nerdy shit, right? Like, of course, the Indians had to do that, right? Like, make it into some kind of a scientific, right, Kama Sutra like thing. But it is an art as well, right? It's an art and a science. So at the male brain, if we see it as like the mechanical side, and then we also see the instinct, as you were saying, Ivan, like the animal side, right? Like the primal side that comes out. So I think we need the layer of like, okay, I know the mechanics, right? I know I got to thrust, right? I know I got to do these certain things. I know I got to finger her. But then it's like, okay, how can I use those as cues, as little like checkpoints in the video game until I get to the boss level, which is like, you know, the, the climax, the crescendo. So thinking of it, you know, again, these are all different analogies. I know we're kind of like rambling on these different analogies for sex, <laughs> like culinary arts and like uh, video games and all this shit. But I think it's very fun, man. I think this is a fun topic. And I think that definitely we've gotten to a lot of epiphanies already. So yeah, thank you all for being here. And if you're a simp, I know you've already hit the dislike button that's okay. We, we forgive you. Yeah, so something I want to say, I want to make two points real quick. First point is going to be on um, creating an imaginary world. Oh, hold on a second. Creating an imaginary world. And the other point is going to be on, um, on just specific communication between men and women. And so this first point that I want to make is that you don't have to have sex in this world and you don't have to have sex in this dimension. Although the physical action will be taking place here, mentally, you could be somewhere else, right? And, and it's, there's, a, there's this, this really cool thing that I did where I've only done this once, right? But it was really like, it was really like dope when it happened. Um, I said, I'm a Jaguar, you're a Jaguar, and you're in the middle of the forest, and I'm walking, and I see you, and I go up the tree, and I come and I smell you, and I can taste you, right, and I can lick you. And in this moment, I've decided that my Jaguar self is going to have sex with your Jaguar self. And sort of that imagination as we're having sex, bringing this, this into action, into, into creation, through saying, I'm, I'm actually not even a human and you're not a human either. And right now we're both animals, right? And it, it, could be, it could be your spirit animal, it could be her spirit animal, whatever it is. Now we're both animals. And we're gonna fuck like animals in the jungle, right? And that shit is really fucking dope when you do it, okay? The second thing I was gonna say is about it's a uh, so of course we already mentioned it's a play, right? Well, in the same way, right? If you're struggling with dating or or talking to girls or whatever, probably not. I know probably not, none of us here. It's not a big issue, but. It's, you have to remember, you're just playing. You're just playing with the other person. Like, you know, that's how I, that's how I, I, I don't, I don't, um, like when I was younger, I didn't understand why people would cat call girls, you know? Like, I was just like, it doesn't make sense to me, right? It's not engaging, right? But when you engage the girl in play, right? And it's the play of a gentleman. We gotta remember that. We're gonna bring this old topic into this new topic. And it, the gentleman is playing, right? And she can see, oh, he's powerful, right? And, 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 and then she wants to play back. She wants to play it back. And, and you get this really, uh, uh, you know, like when, when, when you, you know when you're flirting with somebody, but it's like, it's like flirt flirt you know what i mean it's not just like oh hey what's your number what's your snapchat type of shit no it's like type of type oh oh where are you what country are you from no it's like when you're like full-on flirting where you're like making fun of each other right where you're just not afraid to say you know something that might offend them right in fact many times you're trying to you're trying to mess with them you know what i mean uh 
but like it's happening in this like in this like sexy way it's like so fun it's like this really really fun thing to do right and in that same way we bring that into the world and we say this is how we're gonna we're gonna play now me and this girl we're gonna play because that's just what naturally happens with the masculine and feminine they're always playing they're playing throughout the whole universe if you look at it the masculine and feminine energy are at play through the creation of the universe right that's how they create is they play they interact with each other right and so bringing that into your sex life of course bring that new play that excitement i'm gonna poke here oh like well like oh I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna move my finger in a, a circle right i'm just gonna keep it in the, at the entrance right oh i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab her butt and i'm just gonna grab her butt open i'm gonna open up her, i'm gonna open up her cheeks right you're, you're like playing with the whole body it's like it's play-doh like if you're like like if it's some sort of like advanced toy <laughs> it's like a, the world's most advanced toy that you're playing with and you're, you're squishing it you're poking it you're moving it uh you're, you're engaging with the toy right it's like this toy that that like reacts to the way you touch it all right and um yeah, that's what I, that's what I wanted to mention. That's awesome, man. <laughs> that was incredible. Um, I agree with you. It's like it's that discovery, right? That experimentation and like playfulness. That yeah, you you learn you learn the best while you're playing, right? You learn better while you're playing. So people who are playing during sex, they're learning faster and they can apply quicker and get feedback faster. So totally, man, that, that's so, so key. I was just thinking about this idea of, you know, how a woman's heart usually, and this is generally, generally the rule. I'm not saying that this is the rule for all women, but a woman's heart opens before her legs open, let's say. And for a man, his, he has sex and then his heart opens. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's kind of the opposite in the sense where, you know, men connect through sex to feel, right? To get deeply into their emotions and start to like connect with themselves. Whereas for a woman, it's like they first need to connect with themselves in order for them to open up to sex in a sense. Does that, does that resonate or do you guys understand what I mean? Not really, bro. I don't know. Maybe you might want to say it another way. So men crave connection through sex and women crave, it's not that they crave, women connect and then crave sex. Does that make sense? It's like, for women, it's more like, they open their hearts. They, for women, they open their hearts first in order for them to have sex and be, be trustworthy. Like this man is, you know, someone I could trust, someone who can have my offspring, right? Someone who, is sexually attractive, a viable candidate, right, for my genes to get passed on. Um, but for a man, it's like, we're just like, she's hot, you know? Like, I want to bang her irregardless of whether I want my, you know, like genetic code. I mean, sure, that's happening subconsciously, but it's not like you want your, your heart expands later. Like after you have sex with a woman, you'll notice your oxytocin rises, right? You feel more connected. You feel deeply bonded with her. But for women, they need that oxytocin already to be there for them to open up and connect with a man. So it's like, it's, it's, it's an issue of trust, I guess, and openness where it's like, I don't know. Th that's just something that I noticed. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, like, uh, my body's not registering it as like the highest truth. 
um, I guess part part of it is like uh, like yeah, I can look at a girl. I think you're frozen, brother. Is he frozen? Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it. Now, time for a quick commercial. This episode has been sponsored by TPM, Teatro Vasicity Method. <laughs> yeah, and lines then. And lines then. Yeah, for sure. It's, a, it's an interesting position that it froze on Ivan. He's sort of like. <laughs> and now we have two Ivans. Fantastic. Clone aid is real. It was always <clears throat> real. So yeah, saying brother, as you got cut off, it doesn't. It didn't register with you what I said. Yeah, yeah. And part of it is because, like, I can look at a girl and I can be like, she's hot and she's got the qualities of like, of attraction, but like me not, not want to have sex with her. Like, like I don't know. Like I, like I don't trust her to have sex with her. Like, you know. Because, like, bad shit can happen from that, you know? So, I don't know. I personally feel like I have to trust first as well. But I can most definitely, like, look at a girl and be like, yeah, she's, she's really hot. Like, I, I, like, I want to fuck her. Like, she, she's fuckable. She has the qualities that would make a man want to fuck her. And I think the same, I think in a way the same sort of happens to women where they can see a man and be like, this guy is... uh He's a, he's a he's a quality man. He's a decent man, but uh, I just don't, I just I'm not comfortable. I think I'm not comfortable enough to, to to do anything. Even if they, I think even if she sees that he has power, but if he doesn't make her feel trust, then then I think that's the key here is is trust, and and when it comes to to having sex with your partner, especially for, for cosmic sex, is hella trust, hella trust. Like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore your body the way that no one's ever explored it. I'm gonna explore it the way I've, I've, I've never explored the body before, All right? And so I, I trust you, I trust, like even as I'm having sex, I'm, I'm like, I trust you. Right. And I think that's just like a, I don't know, that's like a key thing that's coming to me. It's like you need to have so much trust in yeah. your, in order to have sex. I agree with you, bro. I, I totally agree with that statement. I think that I, I sort of wrote it down as you were saying it, what, what I wanted to say. But I, I sometimes feel that sometimes when I say words and I, I write it, it's better. So I said, for men, we crave sex for emotional connection. For women, it's reversed emotional connection that aroused enough for sex. Is that is that clearer? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's what I meant to say. So, so let me see. So it's ten twenty-five. We have five minutes. Anything you guys want to say? Yeah. I want to say for people who want to last longer, like this is something that I've uh, practiced is a simple oh man. I don't know what my mic was doing. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so basically like edging, like bending your knees is an awesome thing to do. Like just bending your knees in general. All right. See you for RJC. Peace. Um, bending your knees and uh, like using things like, Using accessories and things like this is, is always fun, man. You know, you can get like, uh, like I don't know. I've tried cock rings before, you know, like um, numbing condoms, you know, uh, breathing from your belly. That's always great because it gets you really tapped into the actual experience of it because we breathe very shallow when we're very nervous. So in the actual interaction itself, if you're breathing from your belly, it gets you really you know, honed into it. Um, and also like, like, 
mentioned this earlier, Ivan, on our podcast a long time ago, but I want to bring it up again that men don't make enough sounds, right? They don't mm-hmm. communicate, like guys don't communicate enough in the bedroom or like, you know, they don't make any sound. Or they stay hella quiet. I think you're frozen again, bro. Oh, did you hear that? No, I didn't. I, I was just saying that, you know, men don't make uh, sounds like when they're having sex, like not communicating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that aspect. Actually, I don't, I don't like uh, numbing condoms, numbing cream stuff, those sprays and shit. I, I can't feel my dick, bro. I can't feel my dick. <laughs> yeah. Um, hold on. I think it's freezing for me. Yeah, it's freezing for me too. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Ryan? I mean, uh, in terms of like communicating during sex, like what are some things that guys should generally be saying? Because I don't like that how like, do you like it? You know, like, I don't know, like, so many people say stupid shit. I think shit. we're making this way too complex. The whole answer is simple. Just call her beautiful. Whisper and not moan, but that, that bready voice. While, you, while you're in missionary or whatever, grab the back of her head and whisper beautiful nothing's in her ear. That's all the fuck you need to do. And it can vary on, you know. Of course, I can imagine if you're doing doggy. It might be a bit harder. But it follows the same line. Just keep it simple. Whisper sweet nothings in that she's beautiful. And fuck it. If you want to make animal noises, go ahead. I don't know how to make a sound of a giraffe, but fuck it. Do it. I agree with you, man, but I think sweet nothings is like a very vague term. I mean, are you going to, you know, recite Shakespeare? Or you fuck gonna it, tell do it. it. Why not? If <laughs> you, why not? Why Why the fuck not? It would be funny. Here's the thing. I could imagine me doing it, but it needs to be with one, <laughs> a girl that knows Shakespeare and understands that we're doing Shakespeare right now. You know, Shakespeare, the porno. It's, it will be the same thing as, you know, we dressed to doing foreplay in a Jack Sparrow costume and she being a red and, you know, wench, yeah. whatever. I wench. wench. <laughs> you're, you're talking role play, right, right now. Yeah, but it follows the same idea with communication. Yeah. It's just, I assumed that men don't moan. I assumed that this, I don't assume that whatever only to later find out just the simple act of reading it in a, in a way you know this 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 primal urge and communicating from that very right. similar to communicating from blood so pure it's it's it doesn't get more truer than that yeah and so that's and what- like, that's what I was saying about, like, it's more about the subcommunication, right? Because if you have that dominant vibe, you're going to just say the right thing in that moment. You know, you don't really need to overthink it. But in that, like, right spot, in the right moment, you're going to say something that, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I'm not a, again, I'm not assuming that every guy taps into the state. But once you're tapped in, I think it's quite natural that you're going to say something very sexual, sexy, on code. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't have to be hard. Well, you could, you should be hard, but you get the point. <laughs> it's <laughs> an, an easy fantasy. Play oh, Predator. Now, nah, bro, you are freezing up like a motherfucker. I can you guys know. hear me? I can hear you just fine, but your uh, image is freezing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a trick real quick. I'm gonna give you guys a trick so y'all can apply right. this one later. Right? When you're eating pussy, right? Turn your mouth into a vibrator. Right? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's a motorboat. 
That's a motorboat, all right? Uh, a, a vibrator is internal vibration, right? What you just did was external vibration, right? So what you do is like you, you hum, like you start humming, right? And you bring out, you bring the hum into your mouth, yeah. right? As you, as, as you have that hum pressed to her, that's going to fucking blow her away. You start doing ohms, like, in the sex. Yo, this is so on code towards the topic, though, like, cosmic sexuality, like, doing ohms on the pussy. <laughs> oh, I'm on that pussy. Oh, I'm on that pussy. Yeah. Yeah, and in terms of dirty talk, uh, you know, I just, whatever, literally, literally, it's like, if you have to think about it, don't say it. If you have yeah. to think, like, oh, uh, I'm going to say this, no, then don't say that, actually. Cause that's not how you're feeling, right? One of my favorite things to say is like, I love fucking this pussy. Oh, your pussy feels so fucking good on my dick. I want to go so fucking deep inside of yourself. Oh, baby, oh, ba baby, baby, come, baby, come. Or, um, I love, I love, uh, I love how you just melt, right? It's just, I'm just literally just, you know, just like, you're just sort of pointing out things that you like in that moment, yeah. right? The same way that you, when you would be like, you'd go to a new town and you're just walking the street, you'd be like, oh, that's a cool building. Oh, look at that over there. Oh, this is a bird, right? Yeah, in a way, you're sort of just pointing out the things that you like. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that's how la language evolved, right? Language, like the, the reason language was there was to point things out in the environment like and be like yo this is what's going on so the fact that you this so is the fact that you're just like yo your pussy's so wet well yeah it is you know what i mean and you're just pointing out. <laughs> but it's like yeah it's adding uh an amplification you could say to the to the momentum of the moment beautiful bro awesome let's end right here that was an awesome talk thank you so much for tuning in have an incredible day again this is all for educational purposes so, you know, all the content here is to serve the masses, serve the public. Hopefully you, you guys learned something here today and have an incredible rest of your day. Os. Os. Os.